exactly. So, um, so I'm just going to start the session here. So uh, my name is uh, Shurji Dutta. For those of you who are online, many of you know me already. Um, in the room, we have a couple other presenters. Um, I won't be doing much of the speaking today. I'll invite a couple other guests to speak. So we have uh, Amar Tullock here, who you will meet shortly. Um, he's based in Australia. He's a Pacific Island uh, coordinator for DHIS2, and um, he'll introduce himself. We have uh, Malantari here from the Vanuatu Ministry of Health, and Raldi and Rebecca also speaking on behalf of the Solomon Islands Ministry of Health. So I'm going to hand it over to Omar, actually, who's just going to... Thank, thank you, Shurajit. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah, thank you. So basically today, uh, like this slide is our presenting an outline, what we're going to discuss. For me today, I'll give a brief description of the DHS2 background in the Pacific. And then Marlon will go through the Vanuatu implementation, Marlon from the uh, from Vanuatu. And uh, Rodley and Rebecca will go through the Solomon Island implementation. And then Shurajit will continue with the share uh, challenges and demos. So this uh, next slide here is like basically what I uh, wanted to say is like basically the uh, Solomon Islands has transi transitioned to DHIS2 since 2012, and they have implemented we have implemented the HMIS aggregate system, the ICD-10 cause of death tracker uh, program, the COVID-19 vaccination registry, and the adverse event following immunization module. And the next slide here is all uh, it's a brief description of the implementation in Vanuatu. And technical support has been provided since 2014 to the uh, to Vanuatu for routine HMIS, the immunization uh, aggregate module, and the COVID-19 vaccination registry and surveillance package module, and as well as the malaria events and tracker modules. So, as we all know, the COVID-19 uh, in the Pacific has given an opportunity for the complementing of um, the. For example, the COVID-19 vaccination registry, which was first implemented in Solomon Island in, in March 2022, 2021, sorry. And then it was all uh, following that it was implemented in Vanuatu. And there was minimal need for reconfiguration of tracker modules and adaptation of training uh, templates and the needs and uh, to local needs. And as there was similarities in the reporting and workflow in both Pacific Islands, and then the technology for the use of a COVID-19 uh, certificates was borrowed from the Lao DHIS implementation and HISP Vietnam and uh, Surajit has been helping with that implementation. And I will hand over for the next slide to uh, Malon for the DHIS2 implementation in Vanuatu. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amir. So basically, um, DHS2 collects, uh, uh, sir, next slide, finally, uh, collects uh, data from uh, primary health facilities such as health center, dispensary, and uh, aid posts, collecting especially data within the outpatient NCD environment, uh, health, and other uh, health data. The system itself is both paper based and uh, digital, where Health facilities complete the HMIS form, then submitted the form to the provincial HIS officer to end the data. And furthermore, the, the malaria uh, uh, program was the first public uh, health program to develop its own module on the DHS2 that uh, combines uh, aggregated and event based reporting. And also now they, they are also trialing the, the tracker based system. And next slide, uh, Nick. As such, other diseases uh, or disease programs saw the benefit of integrating their standalone information system into the DHS2 so that they can take advantage of the system uh, functionality. For example, we are integrating the uh, routine immunization, data collection, the PB, and also the uh, neglected tropical disease or NDD. Next. Next, please. Uh, so, uh, in 2019, the back, Nick, so, so. in 2019, the Fanatic Routine Health Immunization System 
had a major changes on the collection form, a data collection form. Unfortunately, the changes within the DHS do have been delayed due to COVID-19, but this year we managed to progress. Fortunately, with the support from uh, Nick, John Lewis, and uh, Hips Vietnam, and also Michael Batswat, a former WHOPA in Vanuatu, we should, I think we should expect some of the changes on the DHS to hopefully next month with the progress of changes currently taking place. Next. The DHS was extremely useful for Fanuatu and for eight years now, we have learned a lot. And some of the, the, the lessons that we, we learn are in country capacity, uh, Fanuatu has a very small uh, HAS team. Um, the challenges uh, sometimes when uh, the the manage the staff management uh, leave the office, it is uh, it we lost uh, significantly the institutional knowledge and uh, memories. Uh, the other thing is the semi reliant on development partners to uh, an external HS support that we usually depend to modify the system and also poor design of data collection form, which also affect our data collection and also the absence of guidelines and SOP that will guide us to, to collect quality data. And lastly, is, uh, it requires a cleanup of metadata and data element to enhance uh, uses. Next slide, please. And some of the uh, success. And some of the success that we had uh, this last year or this year is the COVID-19 vaccination um, rollout, which we use the tracker module. Uh, the COVID-19 vaccination registry has been one of the most comprehensive in, and intensive health-related data collection exercise ever conducted in Vanuatu. Since the rollout of COVID-19 vaccine in June of 2021, over 140,000 people, or almost half of Vanuatu total population, have been registered and offered 260,000 uh, administ administered vaccine doses have been recorded in the system or the vaccine register. Over 100 users across the six provinces of Vanuatu have actively used the DHS to uh, vaccination register system, entering and analyzing data on a daily basis. Using the event report features of DHS to elab it elaborates coverage report were generated, generated on a weekly basis by national and provincial uh, team. Uh, the analysis provided by this weekly report played a critical role in guiding the Ministry of Health operation in order to reach maximum coverage of its target population. We have been also working along with other uh, relevant stakeholders, such as the uh, civil registration. We were able to call up the vaccine registry to identify and address the gaps in the civil status of uh, civil status of Vanuatu citizen. With with the assistance of uh, HIPS, um, the Vanuatu Ministry of Health has also been able to produce and successfully deployed a vaccine certificate that can be produced directly from the tracker module of the vaccine vaccination registry. And uh, within that, the Ministry of Health has managed to issue 7,700 copies of vaccine certificate for cross-border travel. Some of the challenges that we face when we implement the COVID-19 vaccine registration is uh, adaptation of the uh, Android app or the mobile app was challenging, especially where it was most needed or in remote areas. 
this was largely due to the limited amount of uh, training that the user were able to receive. Another one is identifying uh, defaulters, example, uh, people who failed to return for the second shot uh, directly from the DHS to platform was difficult and required a semi-automated work around using Excel. And now uh, the other one is users often created an event and then uh, navigate out without completing the event. Sometimes it results to um, NA, uh, incomplete events. We have um, also experienced uh, some of the, uh, a few server crashes around October, but it was quickly uh, rectified by upgrading the server. And uh, the second loss is the user often ended uh, inquiry a batch number which requires a bulk editing. And uh, lastly, the user edit feature sees functioning and we were not able to track uh, those who end the incorrect information. Some of the lessons uh, we have learned, we quickly realized that um, making data mandatory is essential for consistent data collection. And uh, the other one is that keeping hard copies as a backup is critically important, especially with a low uh, network coverage and also for uh, verifying info, uh, missing information. We are also looking ahead of introducing the um, online uh, vaccination certificate, uh, which will be uh, on, on an online portal and can be verified on an app. And uh, this will also help us to minimize the work that we were doing. And a recipient can download their own certificate at their own uh, premises. Or, and also this, um, a uh, vaccine registry will also help us to make an or contact an in-depth analysis so, so that it will help us in the future. We are also exploring the potential to integrate the, the tracker module to also capture um, other routine immunization uh, vaccine and also develop and publish a dashboard within the Power BI, report, uh, Power BI uh, reporting on key indicators from the DHIS2. And uh, there's also plan that, uh, there's also plan to develop an interoperability with other systems such as the uh, code data that we have been using to manage uh, COVID-19 cases. Okay, uh, thank you, Malin. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Rodley and Rebecca, who will speak to us about the Solomon Islands. As you can see, COVID-19 vaccination, I feel that notification because of that was also implemented in the Solomon Islands. The next slide. So it's the health information system history. In the early 2000s, Microsoft Access was a database originally used for health medical information system. The system was standalone and was used only to capture routine health activities from all health facilities. It has limited to integrate specific health program data requirements onto one single platform. In 2004, the database was implemented in all 10 provinces. However, the data entered into the system will have to be downloaded to a floppy disk on a monthly basis and then sent to the national HIS office for the national database system could be updated. 
the transition to the DHIS2 system started in 2011, and it was finally implemented in 2012. By 2014, DHIS was implemented in nine of 10 provinces in the Solomons, with data entry performed at the provincial level. The HIS2 system was used to capture aggregate data for reporting of monthly report of health activities, TB quarterly report, syndromic surveillance. The HIS2 even captured the malaria case management in 2015. There were nine provinces that implement that. In 2020-21, the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak causes us to use COVID-19 vaccine, IV, and the cost of that as well, that is in, added into DHIS too. The next slide, in DHIS two, we have <laughs> compromise of three, co three main components. That's the data entry, data analysis, and the dashboard, which the users can use it. The success and achievement that were accessible at the provincial and national level. Also, <coughs> the, data quite, the data quality was improved by checking and verified. Also, timeliness of data reporting was improved. The HIS dashboard provided an avenue for feedback reporting to be accessed by provincial staff, as well the data analysis and report can be accessed by the DHIS to users. The system also analyzes analyzes to make it easier for the HIS unit to produce reports and share these reports with decision makers and donors. Now I can handle this presentation to Rodley to continue on. Thank you, Rodley. Thank you, Rebecca. So after a successful uh, experience with the DHS2 uh, aggregated um, system, we're looking on the, moving on to capturing uh, like mortality information. So we can register new people and enter the causes of death and notification details in the system as well and also enroll existing people and, and enter the causes of that detail as well and search for existing record both in that notification and cause of that process of death and also perform a basic analysis on the causes of that data that can be shared with the stakeholders and register death from the covid vaccination registry as well next slide please So for the COVID vaccination uh, system, the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, elevated the needs for the accurate, accurate and timely data for decision making. And the COVID vaccination in Solomon Island campaign was started in two, 20, on 24 March 2021. DHIS2 was identified as the main information system that can be used to track COVID vaccination in the country. The SIS2 was selected based on its, uh, it was, it was a, a system that has been used to collect most of the health data in the country. And also the system has been implemented nationwide in the country. So it's the main system that's been used in the country, in widely used in the country. So the SIS2 tracker system is quite new to the DHIS users because it's a uh, very more familiar with the aggregated data, but when we implemented the tracker system, it's more new. <clears throat> but there are similar features to the aggregated system that it's a three main component, which is the data entry component, the uh, data analysis, and the dashboard component. And uh, in the data entry component, we have two sections, which we have the enrollment section, the immunization section, and the and the demographic information of the client they enter on the enrollment section and the immunization, sex, uh, immunization detail of the client was 
entered in the immunization section. So it captured the demographic information and the immunization information as well. Next slide. <clears throat> so here on this uh, screen, you can see the data entry component of the COVID vaccination uh, system. So you can see on my, on there the enrollment section and the immunization section, which collected the demographic information and the immunization information for the client who being vaccine. Uh, next slide. So, so for the success and achievement for implementing the system, we see that COVID-19 vaccination tracker system provide a timely data for decision making. The system provides a tool to verify to verify status for international vaccination status for international travel. Also, we can track uh, vaccination coverage and vaccination updates daily. And also we can track vaccination status for individual citizen in the country. Next slide. So despite of uh, challenges and success, we have also had challenges and issues. So when the the COVID vaccination tracker system is first used in the Solomon Island. There were a few system, systematic issues that we encountered. Uh, but this issue was quickly fixed by the DHIS2 support team at the University of Oslo. Also, due to poor internet coverage in the province, in the provinces, as particular in the remote areas where vaccination sites are conducted. Timely entry of COVID vaccination data is a challenge. Also, we have few challenges where we face that uh, sometimes the, the vaccination manufacturer information is usually missing in the system. So many records did not contain, contain this information. So we have to end the information after the vaccination, uh, the vaccination manufacturer information is there in the system. Next. So the other system that we implemented is the IP adverse effect, adverse event follow-up immunization. So the, this system is very important for the uh, safety purposes. The platform is usually to record and track people who have adverse reaction to the vaccine. It also recorded the adverse event uh, outcome. The system also provides an information to the Solomon Island government about the safety of the safety status of the vaccine that's been administered in the country. Next. So the other system that was implemented is the death notification and the medical certification of causes of death. So the death notification and medical certification of causes of death system was implemented in March 2020. This is the main system that will be used to record all death events in the country. And the system will be linked to the civil registration system managed by the civil registration office for registration of death. At the moment, uh, the system is currently accessed by the national HIS team or officer, but it will be rolled out to the province in future. The system has uh, some component which is similar to the DHIS2 aggregated system and the tracker system as well, uh, COVID vaccination tracker system. The causes of death information, uh, of causes of death uh, section included the ICD-10 coding, which is very useful for data analysis and uh, sharing this analysis to the stakeholders as well. The COVID vaccine, uh, the death notification and co certification of cost of death system also have the death notification platform that incorporates some of the relevant uh, fuel for the Webel autopsy data. And you can see there's some of the fuel on the Webel autopsy in, incorporated with the platform as well to enable the linkage in future or linkage of the two systems, the MCCOD, uh, the medical certification of cost of death uh, platform module and the verbal autopsy module. So also the tracker system module is being implemented with data transfer 
transferred from the previous uh, Excel database that we have in the country. Next. So here in front, you can see the features, component and features of the death notification and medical certification of death of social death module. So here you can see how the death notification system, just to show you that have uh, the level of C features there as well to enable the linkage of the two system. Next. And here you can see the medical certification uh, platform. Of course, so that platform, then you can see we have the enrollment section and we have the place with the can enter the courses of that. And you can see the ICD 10 led, ICD 10 coding is incorporated with the platform or the module. Next, yeah. So for the implementation plan for the system, we are currently using it at the national level, but later on we will be implemented in the province so that data can be entered from the province and we can access it, access it, access the data from the national office. Moreover, the implementation of the DHIS2 death notification system at the provincial level is in line with the proposed registration process that was that will be included in the new law. So at the moment, uh, currently we are reviewing the, the civil registration law. So this process has been included in the law that was reviewed. Next. Thank you very much. I will hand over to Nick. Um, that was a bit of a technical challenge, but you know, also to support these devices out in the field um, became quite difficult. Um, the sustainability of certificate solutions. So I'm going to demo one certificate solution now. But uh, you know, Marlon mentioned, you know, sometimes capacity can be challenging. There's a lot of uh, turnover with staff. So you know, this requires some understanding of of cr cryptography what a private and public key pairing is, things of that nature. So, you know, we're not really at the point where we could realistically hand over these things um, to the to the country to manage these on their own. So we need to come up with some type of plan to get people there and, and we have some gaps to work through. Um, in the Pacific Islands, we also have some competing technical advice, which is okay. It's, it's good to have a robust uh, discussion around things, but often what we're finding, because we don't have any local presence um, you know, there's often some incorrect advice provided to the ministries about what DHIS2 can and cannot do. And um, we're hoping now that Amar is in the region, this will help a little bit uh, to, to mitigate that as he can attend some of these forums. Um, but that has been a challenge for the ministries who then come to us and say, you know, we were told X, Y, and Z about DHIS2. Is this correct? Um, and it's something we have to work through together. Um, server hosting is, a, is another kind of challenge um, in the Pacific Islands. Um, the technical and the financial support for a lot of this um, is provided by various technical agencies and partners over quite an extended period of time um, at this point. Um, and, and you know that the challenges regarding this have only kind of intensified as the requirements to run DHIS2 have become more complex. Um, and the understanding of these technologies, you know, we still don't really have teams we can work with too much. We've tried, you know, engaging with some local agencies on this before. Um, but but the discussions have have been kind of stalled at this point in time. Um, another area, and this is more of a principle, I guess, than a challenge. We try to stay away from any type of custom application development. 
Um, there's not really anybody we could hand that over to at the moment. Um, so we use the core DHIS2 platform as much as possible. That's why in the screenshots you saw, for example, there was no custom forms. Um, you know, we, we try to use as much of the, the kind of core as we can um, and push it to the limits until we, you know, have something serious that we have to deal with. Um, also development of the national and country teams. This has been quite challenging. There's some turnover in some cases. Doing this remotely has been extremely challenging, of course, um, with the internet connection and everything um, there, um, and just kind of getting people up to speed and making sure they can push along. We really push things a lot with the cause of death and COVID-19 in particular with tracker systems. It's the first time both these countries had implemented tracker and we did it all remotely. So it's a little bit challenging for us. Um, another area where we're kind of struggling still is also for this long-term financial support. It's still very project-based. Um, you know, we've been now supporting these countries for, for 10 years and eight years, respectively. Um, and there are some gaps, I, I think, there that we could handle a bit better. But with that being said, there are some, some successes, as the teams have mentioned. So I just wanted to demonstrate two things really quickly for you before we end this uh, session here. So one is from the Solomon Islands, and this is for cause of death data. And it's still something I think a lot of countries could learn from. We developed a very small tool basically to bring data into a WHO tool called Endicod, which is analysis of cause of death. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment. And also for the Vanuatu COVID-19 certificate, brought it over from Laos. Um, actually, then we're also bringing it over to many other places like Honduras and Equatorial Guinea, um, working with those countries using the same framework. So I just wanted to show you those real quick. So. Okay, so so this might seem like a bunch of kind of you know unreadable kind of stuff to a lot of people, and it, it mostly is. But if you can uh, kind of see, these are the ICD-10 codes here, and we make this so we can basically bring this in to the WHO tool for analysis. So we have all the cause of death, all the mortality codes from the codification of deaths. Uh, this data is from 2019. There's no names or anything. It's just completely anonymous um, information. Um, so what we do is then, you know, using this, basically, we then bring it over into this tool here. This is called uh, Enicod. It's the analysis of cause of death. It's a tool developed by WHO for mortality analysis um, specifically. Um, this new version that they've released is actually quite nice. Um, they just recently in 2021. Um, so it was a nice update to the tool. So basically, we use, you know, that kind of um, mix of codes that I showed you earlier. And we import it essentially into this system and we can then perform some analysis and you select your type of data it is. It supports up to ICD-11 in Solomon Islands. Um, we're using ICD-10, um, so we're not using ICD-11 yet. And this part here, I don't know why they ask for your email. I'm not so happy about that, but in any case, they ask for your email. So. Just upload the data. And this allows then for you know, all kinds of analyses and comparisons with countries of similar income, similar demographic characteristics, and you know, all kinds of other stuff. And you know, for anyone familiar with this tool, you'll be able to comment on that more. But this is a very powerful tool, I think, for the Solomons to really understand their cause of death data more, um, especially because of this linkage of, uh, you know, of this external data sources. And you have a lot of uh, you know, measures of data quality, um, you have the ability to analyze all your causes of death um, based on the codes that you've entered. Um, and there's quite a bit of advanced analyses and modeling that's been applied um, to this information. So we really hope that this will support um, the Solomons to look at their cause of death data more. I think also it allows you to come up with measures and estimates of how incomplete your data is. Um, for anyone who's familiar with mortality data, you know that it's often very incomplete in many of these countries. Um, and it actually comes up with measures of completeness based on cause of death estimates that have been performed by other agencies and other services. Um, so this is a very powerful tool. And uh, we think that this will be, we were trying to make this a bit more neater. Obviously, you know, you have this whole kind of manual process of uploading the data and things like that. Um, but at least now they support a standard file format before it was also a kind of uh, Excel sheet that was very messy. Um, so, so now that they support the standard file format, we might be able to do this a bit cleaner um, than we have in the past. So this is one example, and you know the team in Solomons, we're still working with them. Have to do some more training with them on this, um, and you know they have, um, you know, their familiarity with the tool is increasing I, I, uh, over time. So we're we're, we're going to kind of continue to work with them, and we have some of our partners here um, from the CDC Foundation, 
um, Deirdre and Hafiz, who've been supporting a lot of this work as well um, to kind of make them uh, help them support uh, this implementation. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to quickly talk about was the certificate implementation. Um, this is the example I'm taking is from Lao, but actually we're using a testing system, obviously. I don't want to show anyone's name or anything like that. Um, but this is basically the, the same type of framework um, being used now in Lao, in Vanuatu, and we brought it over to Latin America and are using it in Honduras and Equatorial Guinea as well. Well, Equatorial Guinea is in Africa, um, just a Spanish speaking country. So um, what we're able to do is actually produce this certificate in two ways. One is directly inside of DHIS2. The other is through a web portal. And this is uh, supported through a, I'll just put this up real quick. I don't wanna go through all the details here, but there's kind of a cryptographic component of the certificate being signed so it can be authenticated appropriately. Um, and the technology behind this um, is driving that signing. Close that. And you can see the certificate here in, inside of DHIS. Um, that's basically just done directly in uh, the tracker capture application as an extra stage. Um, then we also have this uh, information. It's, this is a public web portal, and this is what Malin was alluding to, um, where we basically allow people to go on and get their own certificate, right? And, and many countries have this type of service. Um, so just uh, reload the page here. This is a bit of an old one. And there's two services here. We can generate the certificate. We can also use that key pairing to verify the certificate as well through that QR code um, that has been generated. So let's just see if it loads. Okay, I think the demo is not responding at the moment. I apologize for that. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, you are able to verify this though when you download it offline. Um, it also works completely offline. That's the advantage of this whole system. So the idea is that uh, you know using those key pairings, you can verify this offline. The internet connection in the Pacific is not that great. So there is a mobile app that's also been developed by uh, the His Vietnam team um, that basically allows you to store this on your mobile device. Um, and then you can verify this um, without an internet connection as well. So the web portal um, does use internet, of course, um, in order to generate and verify the certificate. Um, whereas the mobile device, you can store these on your mobile device and you do not need an internet connection to store or verify the certificate. Of course, you can print it out as a piece of paper as well and carry it around um, if you need to. So there's a couple of different mechanisms that are used. I, I apologize that I'm unable to show um, the, uh, the portal at the moment. But this has been a, a bit of a success, I think, for Vanuatu. We are still working towards providing them with a more robust solution. Um, they, they asked for this, the, the public portal as well, and that's taking a little bit more time. Um, but that should be hopefully implemented soon. All right. So we're almost nearing the end of the time. Um, we're almost nearing the end of the time for the session. Um, so I think... Uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, if there are questions, uh, Martin has posted a link on the community of practice. Um, of course, anyone in the room, if there are questions, feel free to grab uh, myself or, or Amar and we'll, we'll be happy to talk to you. But thank you very much to our presenters from the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. It's late in the evening there and not so easy remotely, um, but uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. And if there are any questions, please feel free to post them on the community. Thank you very much everyone for attending our small session.